anyone who is talented is going to have an opportunity to grow really fast um, because the industry is just starved for people that have drive and have passion and want to do great. And, and quite often people can get promoted too quickly and they miss the great foundation that comes along with really learning the different roles and responsibilities and management positions as they grow. This is Hospitality One to One, conversations on the industry. Here's your host, Chris Bettis. Thank you for joining us. Today we are speaking with Keith Huffman, who has lived his life in the hospitality industry, so he's no stranger to making his mark on restaurants and outlets. His current company, Endurance Management Group, focuses on the handling of branding, rebranding, and operations consultations for concepts ranging from standalone restaurants to outlets in hotels and restaurants nationwide. And now, Keith Huffman. What exactly is Endurance Management Group? We are a consulting and branding company in the hospitality space. Uh, We work with hotels, bars, and restaurants, uh, both freestanding and within hotels. Okay, and what gave you the inspiration to start the company? You know, I moved to Cleveland to help create the Nine uh, downtown. It's a autograph collection, and there's 200 luxury apartments and different bars and restaurants. And I did that project, uh, all included was about four years from pre-opening to post-opening and operations. And I had an opportunity to step out and do things on my own. And I thought I can go work for someone else or I could do it for myself. And I talked to different companies, uh, different jobs. And, you know, it kind of came back where there could be a really good job that I liked but it require moving and you know living out of a you know suitcase five days a week, or I could stay here and do it for myself in a city that I really like, where all my friends are based out. So I thought, well, what the heck? Let me give it a try. That's fantastic. Just went on your own there and did your own thing. That's fantastic. Well, and it was you know something that I thought about over the years. Um, you know, could I really do this? And I knew that I, I mean, I'd love to own a hotel one day, uh, an inn. Uh, I would definitely love to do that. Uh, owning a bar or a restaurant probably isn't the exact right thing for me. I really like, that's where I really like the hospitality and hotel component where you've got the overnight component. Um, and, and I really enjoy that. So I've always thought about kind of doing my own thing, but I realized over the years that I had worked with different consultants and there were people that consultants that I enjoyed working with, where they were very helpful. And then there were other consultants that would kind of tell me what I already knew but I really wanted help and I wanted to be a solution. So that's where I believe that I come into play with Endurance Management Group. Your desire to help people is really what inspired you to want to move forward with the company. Yes, it's, it's helping and really working on their behalf. You know, having you know, had ownership stake in other operations before, you know, holding senior leadership positions with other companies and working with ownership groups I really understand what it's like to think like an owner, but more now than ever do I really get that. So I typically will always look at things from the employee, from the guest, and from the owner's perspective when trying to make recommendations and and make decisions. Gotcha. Now, how do you get your inspiration for creating new concepts and brands? You know, I try to read as much as I can, you know, whether it's, you know, Restaurant News or F&B or Bon Appetit, all the different, you know, publications that are out there. But when I travel, I make a point of whenever I go to a city to really see what are the best places, you know, who who's chattering on Yelp. Um, you know, I follow a lot of restaurants on Instagram to see who's kind of doing a really good job in their social media because uh, that's another you know service that we offer and I want to make sure that we're sharp in so it's really just trying to have a pulse on as much as I can and following you know the people and following the right bloggers in different markets just to see who people are talking about and I mean I guess following up to that so you've got this concept or brand how do you build the team around that concept or brand so the we we build a brand playbook is is what I call it and our, and our brand playbook is a foundational um, piece of material that goes from talking about the comp set 
Uh, if we go into a given market, what our comp set's going to be. We look at who our target guest is. We really start study that demographic to learn what the true insights are that go around that demographic. And then we build our brand platform, our brand voice, and our positioning statement. And that brand positioning statement is really the guidepost of that brand. And from there, we build out the food menu, the cocktail menu, the uniforming, the, the music, the overall vibe of the place. And that launches into you know, the specific service standards. And all of these things that we work on all have to tie back to the brand DNA and the brand positioning statement. If they don't, then we've gotten off track somewhere. Uh, and then from there, we build the brand activation platform, which is how we're going to be in the digital space and social media and how we're going to communicate out our brand. So that whole brand playbook is really what we deliver to our, our client. And then we train the opening leadership team on that. So I'll typically get involved in a, you know, a general manager, a chef, you know, maybe a mixologist, but always working with the client because at the end of the day, that's who they're working for and it's vital that that connectivity is there. But I stress to everybody the importance of the brand playbook. So your your mission overall when, it's, when you're putting together a brand or a concept is to make sure everyone buys into what that particular brand or concept is and you build from there. Yeah, absolutely. You know, starting with the key stakeholders up front. So there are some clients that want to get involved and, and, and be part of the process going all the way through. And then there's others that don't because they don't have the time and that's why they're hiring us to put that together for them, but still do touch points and progress points along the way because you're right, the, the key stakeholders absolutely have to buy in because when they go do property visits, when they're working with their team, they always have to be thinking about the brand. Now, why would someone choose Endurance Management Group over other branding and consulting companies? Great question. Um, and it's one that I think about often when I'm, because I don't often know who I'm competing against. Uh, more often than not, I'm working with clients who I've been referred to from someone else that I've worked with before, I've met through someone. Um, so there's always competition. But what I really look for is um, my insight into the business, the my, my understanding of what I believe really what guests want and what a certain neighborhood or hotel needs to go after and what it needs to be. Um, and, and this is more towards hotels. Sometimes hotels will try to overdo or underdo the potential of their concept. So I always try to guide to make sure we're doing the right thing for that marketplace, for that hotel ownership group, because that, that just is dependent on who they're going to hire for a team and what that team is going to have to do. And at the end of the day, that they get the return on investment that they're looking for. What do you feel is the singular most important thing in a successful food and beverage operation? Passion and talent. Um, boy, you said singular. Well, it's hard because you pa passion is critical that everybody involved um, is really into the, the creation and the end goal of serving guests, customers, whatever you're calling them, the best quality of product, service with a value every single day. And you have to do that all the time. And that's why I go back to passion because that's probably the single most important factor that's going to drive you through the ups and downs and make sure you're always balancing you know, the, the quality, um, the service experience, and the, and the value. What excites you? about 2018 i mean i know we're we are looking toward the end of the year and now we're getting ready to go into the next year 2018 what gives you the goosebumps if you will what what really excites you about next year if i look at just where the industry is going there are so many markets that you go into and you, you, the, the chain restaurants are just really struggling right now especially at the at the upper end and it's this isn't anything new it's been going on for a while um, and it's because of the proliferation of the independent chefs, restaurant owners that have backers that are creating these really fun, unique concepts. And some of them very singular focused, um, whether it's, you know, 
a, a brew pub and a donut shop or just the singular really you know great local uh, pizza joint that's going up here with just craft cocktails um, there are people there are because you're not building so many large restaurants you can take these risks on smaller places that have a more singular focus and allow people to do you know a couple things really really well so I'm curious to see where that's going to evolve and continue going in 2018. Um, and then from a hotel standpoint, there are a lot of hotels that were purchased in you know the end of you know 2010, 2011 when the economy is starting to pick up and those hotels are trading right now and there's opportunities to reposition them and put good brands in them. So it's really finding the ownership groups and the management companies that want to make a difference in food and beverage and, and take the risk. Because quite honestly, so many management companies and really ownership groups drove this that getting out of the food and beverage business and the hotel and leasing those spaces out to third parties was the right thing to do because they didn't want the risk or they didn't trust the management company or a combination of both of them and when you do the numbers what you get in rent from a lease tenant you can do so much better than that on your own you know and generate more profitability and have a higher return on investment for the overall asset and then as a management company, you get to control that. But the management company has to be ready to do that and commit to that. And that's where I really try to guide people and helping them set up, you know, if, if you want to get in the restaurant and bar business and compete in a big way in the lifestyle segment, you have to have an infrastructure. Some people at corporate that really understand that they can really have your back as, as you're ramping up and launching these concepts. Now, the focus of this podcast at is of course the employee brand so perhaps we can adjust the conversation a little bit to ask this if you're a new restaurant or a new hotel and obviously we'd love for them to work with your company but if you will if there's one piece of advice you can give any new hotel or restaurant when it comes to employee branding what's the most important thing when it comes to working with their employees that any new hotel or restaurant can take hold of it or do commit to training and people talk a lot about training and really have a high level of commitment to that and delivering your brand um, you'll hire the right people you'll hire them in the right amount of time and you'll give them the adequate amount of time to train um, and, and that's something that often gets pinched in an opening because you're trying to get open you're trying to finish and this is new openings not kind of a rebranding or a refresh but where you're really opening up a new space making sure you give people enough time give them two weeks to get in the space and if you don't have the the luxury of getting into the kitchen prior to those two weeks rent a kitchen locally there's always different you know food co-ops different places to go to where you can get in the kitchen and let your chef and your team create food and taste it over and over and again so that that food is just spot on and then when you get in the space two weeks out then you're training the staff. But if the food's already done, you will be able to you know, have a really good rhythm to launch that, do the practice feedings, and, and open up with great success. So it all comes back down to training and, and the commitment to that. Recently, we had a restaurant open across the street from where we work, and they offered mm -hmm. a, a free night, if you will. Well, it was actually two nights where there was no charge. They comped the meals, and it was a chance for their employees to test out serving and at the end of the meal they gave you a receipt to show you what your meal would have cost had you paid for it mm -hmm. but they also took pride in the fact that each of the employees either had a dessert they may have either helped put together or made a suggestion on uh, there's a certain pizza a certain style to what extent do you feel allowing creativity with the employees plays a role in their in the employee brand well, first of all, I love what you how they did how they approach that with you. That giving you a check at the end of the night. So many people do these practice uh, training runs, but as a customer, you don't really know what you would have spent. So that's critical to give you feedback to see if you've hit the value. So that was very smart operator. Um, getting people's buy-in, which is what we're talking about, is crucial. Um, no matter if it's getting you know help picking out the uniform the the music um, key menu items um, maybe where you're going to locally source an ingredient from all those different facets really playing into people having the buy-in and that's hard to manage because you get a lot of different people the the managers have a lot on their plate 
Um, but it's the skilled managers that really understand the value of that and getting that buy-in from the team that helps with a successful launch. So what is the number one thing employers or employees look for in a bar or restaurant inside a hotel? Employees want to work with people like them. So when you have a quality environment, you want to have the best, most talented people on your team, and the people on your team want to work with others like them. And that's probably the most crucial. So the one question that you know employees, you, you want your employees to ask themselves, if I had a friend that was looking for work, would I recommend this bar, restaurant, or hotel to work in? On the flip side, as an employer, you want your employees to ask that same question. You want that to be a very high mark because you want to have the type of environment that people want to work in um, because this, the stronger your work ethic is, your culture to get people to stay, that's just golden rather than having people hop around and go from restaurant to restaurant. Gotcha. Now, if we will, let's kind of branch it out a little bit. So look at that same question from a guest standpoint. You're walking down the street. What's the number one thing you feel guests are looking for in a bar or restaurant inside a hotel? They're going to look at your reviews. They're going to look at you on Yelp. They'll look at you on TripAdvisor. And they want to see great reviews. They want to see something interesting about I'm just speaking about reviews right now um, because that's typically where people start. And then when they bounce over to your website, they want to see that that kind of matches what people are talking about online. So, you know, the right the right visual, um, the the right menu, the right cocktail experience. And then again, that reinforcement of the social media and what people are talking about, you having that presence there. Because people, when they go, there's a large portion of people that want to be able to say, I went to this hot new restaurant or I was in that city and I found this on Yelp and I had the greatest experience. People want to tell others what they found. So it's almost like, you know, it's almost walking down the virtual street versus the physical street. You've had multiple state experience helping different hotels and restaurants. What have you learned from operations that have not been successful? Any common themes? Quite often it's the commitment of ownership or the management company or sometimes just the leadership within the hotel to really take some risks. And, you know, there are, you know, where you get great risk, you get great rewards. And not that you want everything you do in food and beverage to have some risk to it, but in order to be top of mind and create concepts or even a promotion within your existing concept to try to reach a new audience, it's vital that you can take some risks and and get creative. And quite often the cultures don't often allow that. And that's probably the biggest challenge I think that hotels face. You're a company, you're a hotel, you're a restaurant. You know that your employer brand may not be the best. You may have heard things, you may have found out, there may be an issue you're facing. What's step one you take if you're a current operating hotel or restaurant now to improve your employee brand? Boys, almost get out of your own way um, to a certain extent. Your, your guests are telling you a lot. So if you have an un- unhappy employee group, you're going to have poor guest service scores. You know, or or you know, poor reviews. Whatever it is, you, your reviews are going to be low. So it's really recognizing, you know, can I make this change, and do I really want to make this change to become a great place to work, a great place to eat, drink, or stay, and then coming up with a plan to do that. And the best way to do that is by listening to your team. Your associates know what you need to do better. Um, you have those that are vocal, those that want to have an opinion, and it, whether it's your so whether it's the room attendant, the dishwasher, the cook, the sales manager, all the different people, everybody has an opinion, and it's creating an environment where people feel safe to express themselves and be able to let you know what needs to be better. And quite often that's hard because it's you know they always say the fish stinks from the head, 
Um, so whoever the most senior person is in that operation on property is going to be the person that bears the responsibility of, you know, writing the course of that ship. You're a brand new food and beverage employee. You're out of college, you're out of high school. You want to make a go at it in this career. What's the most important first thing you do if you're looking to grow your career in the industry? It takes time to learn a new bar, restaurant, or hotel. It takes time to learn that culture. And anyone who is talented is going to have an opportunity to grow really fast um, because the industry is just starved for people that have drive and have passion and want to do great. In it. And quite often, people can get promoted too quickly and they miss the great foundation that comes along with really learning the different roles and responsibilities and management positions as they grow. So I will often coach people and just say, you're going to probably have opportunities to get promoted faster than you might be ready for, or you might be ready to grow faster than you're going to get promoted. But just take the time, learn your job, become a subject matter expert, because that foundation will benefit you so much more in your future than you can ever imagine. You brought up become a subject matter expert. To someone who might not know where to look, where are good places for them to continue to hone their craft outside of the restaurant or the hotel? You know, if you're a bartender, you know, join the United States Bartending Guild. The USBG has a phenomenal network of, you know, people by city. There are organizations where they're doing regular events on a, on a weekly, on a monthly basis. There's continuing education that goes along with it. So USBG is huge for bartenders, uh, for chefs. Um, really pay attention to what's going on at the different you know, major hotel schools, uh, sorry, culinary schools, if you graduated from them or not. Uh, pay attention to what they're doing. Uh, join a local ACF chapter in your community and you'll find all those different pieces of it. If you're in the catering or banquet event side of things, join NACE. So I guess my, my point is try to reach out and find chapters for continuing education within your marketplace because you'll find people like you to network with that can help you and be a resource and guide you in your career or a particular problem that you might be having on any, any given day. Fantastic. So as we wrap up, and again, thank you very much for your time today, Keith. How can people get a hold of you? Thanks, Chris. They can reach me via my website, and that's endurancemanagementgroup.com. Uh, that'll give them an opportunity to take a look to see the different services that we offer, uh, take a look at my team members, and look at some of our current and past projects. That's fantastic. And for those listening in the car or away from your desk, going to have a pen and paper handy. That's quite all right. We're going to put a link to Keith's website up on our hospitality com website. Keith, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your invaluable insights. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Chris. This was good. I appreciate your time today. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Stitcher. We're also available at facebook.com forward slash hospitality one to one. That's hospitality, the number one, number two, and number one. We're also on Twitter at hospitality one to one and www.hospitality one to one.com.